Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about this limit that's having a tangent cube in there. So how do we compute this limit? First thing is that whenever we encounter a limit problem, we can try to directly substitute uh, the value that x is approaching to and see if we are getting an answer. Um, but usually, really often, we will run into problems where we are getting an indeterminate form. So in that case, we are not going to be able to draw any conclusion. So what we're going to do is to just to do a direct substitution and see what's happening. Okay, so first thing, um, let's just think about plugging in. Let's just think about plugging in. Um, the zero into all the x's, right? So we are having tangent cube and then two times something, right? And then in the denominator, we are getting something cubed, which is x cubed. So what are we doing? We are going to plug in the zero in there and see what's going on. And so as you can see here, uh, the numerator, it's two times zero inside the tangent cube function and 2 times 0, of course, it will be 0. So it's we, it's it's just what tangent cube of 0. And what about the bottom? When you have 0 cube, right, that's also approaching 0. And so you can see the tangent is also approaching 0. When you cube it, that's also approaching 0. So we are getting 0 over 0. That's an indeterminate form. And so we cannot really draw any conclusion here. So we got to do something. So now one thing that's um, important that we need to use, there is one fact that we got to use and we got to recall is that we need to recall this, which is this, this fact right here. It's the limit as data approaching zero, sine of data over data is equal to one. So the limit is equal to one as data is approaching zero. So that means this sign of data over data is approaching one when data is approaching zero. So we're going to use that to help us find this limit. And then you may say that that's a tangent, that's a sign. So how can we use this fact to help us find this limit? Uh, we can actually rewrite the tangent so that it's involving sine and cosine, right? So we don't need to worry about the tangent anymore. So let's do that. So first step, what we are going to do here is that we are going to we write the tangent so that it becomes sine over cosine, right? So we are going to be getting sine of 2x, okay? And then over and then cosine of 2x. And then remember that there was also a cube on the outside, right? So you are going to be getting a cube on the outside. And then that's not finished yet, right? We still have the denominator, which is just x cubed in the denominator. And so that's our first step. Looks really messy right here. Let's clean up this expression so that it's more manageable, right? So we are going to be getting, so we have the limit as x approaching zero, we are going to be getting, um, we have sine of 2x here, that's in the numerator, that's still going to be in the numerator when we clean up the expression, but then you gotta cube that, right? So we are going to be getting sine of um, 2x cubed, right? I mean, sine cubed of 2x. And then what about the cosine? The cosine is in the denominators and we are cubing that. So the cosine should belong to the denominator should belong to the bottom, right? Okay, so that's not finished yet. We still have this x cubed. Um, that's also in the denominator, so I'm going to write it as times one over, one over x cubed. Okay. So now the question is, what should we do next? Um, as you can see here, we have the sign and then we also have the X at the bottom. So that means we, if we put them together in this form, then we can actually use this fact, right? So let's actually put them together. So we are going to be getting sine of two X. Okay, so we are going to be getting sine of 2x. And then that's a cube 
okay? So if we put the X cube under it, right? If we put the X cube under it, then it's going to be X cube right here. And then now we don't need to worry about the cosine, right? So just leave the cosine for now. So I'm going to just be getting one over just the cosine cube. Because if you plug in the zero for the cosine, as you can see here, what happens, we are actually just getting one here. So that's not really causing any problem. So let's, let's forget about the cosine cube for now. We're just going to put it um, with the function, but then we don't need to worry about it too much. We can focus on computing this thing. So one thing that's really important to remember is that when data is approaching zero, sine of data over data is approaching one. And what happened is that in order for you to turn this expression into this form, we required this data, right? This is whatever that's inside the sine function must be equal to whatever that's in the denominator. That's something that's that we need to make sure that they they match. But here they don't really match right here because we have a 2x here, we have an x cube here, so we need to do something first. So first thing, we see that they both have a cube, right? So we can actually rewrite it so that the cube becomes an outside exponent. And so it becomes what? It becomes sine of 2x, okay? It becomes sine of 2x over x. Okay, and then you have the whole thing that's raised to the third power. And then don't forget that you still have that one over cosine on at the end, right? So, but that one, it's not a problem. So just leave it for now. Okay, so now let's think about this. How do we actually turn, right? How do we actually turn this in that form? Remember that whatever that's inside the sign, right? It must also be in the denominator. So inside the sine function, we have the 2x. What do we have here? We have an x. So all we need to do is to put a 2 right here. Okay, so we got to put a 2 here. And so I'm going to put a 2 here. Then you may say, isn't that changing the problem? That's why we also need to put a 2 at the top so that we are not changing the problem, right? We are basically multiplying by 1. And then now, if you look at this, sine of 2x over 2x, then that's exactly this form here. Then you may say, what about the 2 here? We can actually do a little bit more of manipulation so that it's not part of the stuff inside the brackets anymore um, because you can see that this is a product, so you can take it outside, right? So when you take it outside, it actually becomes what? Actually becomes 2, right, with a cube. Don't forget that there was a cube applying to the whole thing, right? So it becomes two cubed. And then now we have the stuff in here. Okay, so that's exactly in this form. And then, yeah, so we still need to keep copying that cosine, right? right? One over cosine, one over cosine. Okay, so one thing that I should point out right here that's important to remember is that when data is approaching zero, then this function will be approaching one. It doesn't say that this function is equal to one, so we cannot just turn that into a one. We also need to make sure that whatever that's inside the sine function and then also the denominator are approaching zero at the same time, right? And so now this is x approaching zero. So what can we say about 2x? 2x is actually also approaching zero when x is approaching zero. So now we actually have the right form. So this is approaching one. So what are we getting here? We are actually getting, by the way, we can also compute this 2 cube, which becomes an eight. Okay, and then what about this thing? This thing is actually approaching, okay? So this in here, it's approaching one, right? As two X approaching zero. So we are actually just getting the one here. 
And then actually don't forget, well, we don't really need this limit notation anymore. So I'm just gonna erase that. Let me rewrite the whole expression. Yeah, so that's an eight. That's coming from the two cube. And this is approaching one. So we are just getting the one right here. Okay, what about the other stuff? What about this here? We are actually getting cosine cube. If you plug the zero in here, then we are actually getting one over, right? We're getting one over cosine cube of two times, what is that? That's going to be zero, right? So, and two times zero is zero, cosine zero is one. So you're actually just getting one right here. So what are we getting as the final answer? The final answer is just going to be eight because it's eight times one times one. So we are just getting eight. Okay, so whenever we are doing this kind of problem, then we usually will use this fact to help us solve the problem. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and then share my videos to other people. And also please give me some um, support by um, providing some, asking some questions or having, uh, if you have a topic that you want me to talk about, please leave in the comment. Then that will actually help me to make more videos. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.